Hello everybody and welcome to this part of Physiology Made Easy with me, Dr. Amir Sandhu. Now we're going to talk about whether physical activity leads to weight loss in the next few slides and all of the information is based on the most uh, recent uh, scientific research, okay, the most recent and relevant scientific research. Now what you can see in, in the figure here is whether physical activity actually leads to weight loss. Now this is a figure taken from uh, a research paper published by Franz and colleagues back in 2007. It was a systematic review and meta-analysis, which is one of the strongest ways to look at scientific studies. So it basically takes individual studies, pulls their data and tries to draw conclusions from, from that data. And it's a very strong way to try and understand what's happening in a particular area. Now, with this um, uh, paper, with this systematic review and uh, meta-analysis, they actually had 80 studies that were entered into, into the review, and that allowed them to have a data set uh, of 26,455 uh, individuals uh, that had completed a weight loss intervention. So they were looking at different weight loss interventions over a 48 month period and they were able to kind of map out what was happening in terms of uh, uh, weight loss, which we can see here in kilograms. So let's take a, a look. I really hope that you can see this in, in greater detail, but I will make a reference to the paper so that you can click through to the paper uh, at the, in the in the bottom of, of this video, in the description of this video. Now what we can see with the black line here, these are individuals that had received advice only about uh, weight loss. So, you know, they'd been given uh, some information about ways in which they could lose weight, but there was nothing more than that, no solid intervention given. And it's, it's not surprising then that, you know, if you give somebody telephone advice or advice over a consultation, they're very unlikely to, to take that on board and make a big behavior change. So we can see 48 months later, there's been no real change in their weight loss. Now what we can see, and this, is, this was very surprising even for me as somebody that's interested in exercise physiology, that exercise alone, this is the yellow line here, had very little effect in reducing weight. Okay, this is exercise at the currently recommended uh, uh, activity levels. So this is, these are the, the levels that the government uh, recommends to do physical activity, uh, and it had very little difference to the amount of weight that was lost. Diet was able to make a, a, a quite a dramatic decrease uh, at six months, which started to plateau off. So you know, if you make dietary changes, um, then you will start to have uh, a reduction uh, in, in your weight, but that does start to plateau off. Now, where we can see these very sharp decreases, what we can actually see is the green line is diet and exercise. Now, the red, uh, the red line, the bright red line and the burgundy line, these are actually drugs which can be used to promote weight loss. So it's a very extreme uh, situation that you wouldn't find most people that are wanting to make a lifestyle change in. Okay, so there are uh, uh, certain drugs that are given under controlled conditions by medical professionals. Uh, they can reduce weight by, co by a considerable amount, but they also carry uh, some degree of risk as well. But for a normal person who's o uh, overweight or obese that's looking to lose weight, Diet and exercise, combining the two, has quite a, 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 a marked reduction in uh, weight loss. Okay, so, so there's a greater, uh, a, sorry, a greater increase, not a marked reduction in weight loss, there's a greater increase in weight loss uh, in these uh, individuals, which, is, which dr drops dramatically at six months, but you can start to see that it starts to increase again. Um, not towards baseline levels, but you start to see at 12 months and 24 months the increase in, um, in the weight uh, occurring in these individuals. If I use my cursor here, you can kind of start to see a steady increase um, in, in the weight. Uh, as you go forward, uh, and then a very low energy diet, you see a, a quite a big drop in the amount of weight that's lost. But this isn't necessarily a recommended way of actually losing weight because it's a very dramatic loss in weight, but you start to get quite a quick increase 
back up to 12 months and by the time you hit 36 months as well um, your weight starts to increase so it's, you, you can never sustain a diet which is low in energy and it has so many other harmful um, effects on, on the body that it's simply not worth taking this approach it's much better to be take that middle ground where you're combining the most effective practices and in this case uh, diet and exercise and some of the key points that I try to pick out from uh, uh, this paper is that exercise according to current uh, done according to the currently accepted guidelines doesn't lead to uh, significant weight loss um, we know that diet has a much better effect so diet alone has a better effect than than exercise uh, and some of the other things that I also picked out was that this um, this this plateau so as we start to we have this dramatic drop for most of these interventions then we get this gradual plateau that highlights the importance of maintaining any weight loss intervention strategy that you've implemented okay because if you don't maintain there is this likelihood that you're going to uh, go into a plateau or even go back towards baseline so it's important to try and work with uh, the clinician to try and monitor this over a longer period of time not to expect quick fixes and and that be that you've got to be if you're in it for the long haul you've got to think about weight loss as something that you're going to do over the next one to two years rather than something that you're going to do over the next one to two weeks or one to two months okay so that's extremely important now the reason so I've got this slide on here how much physical activity is actually needed for weight loss okay so this was a randomized control trial which is another very robust scientific methodology to understand more about whether uh, an intervention actually works or not so Ross et al back in 2000 uh, published a randomized control trial in 52 obese individuals these guys were exercising uh, for about 60 minutes a day okay now this is you know a lot more than what's recommended by most public health organizations in countries around the world and if I look at just in the UK this exercising for 60 minutes a day um, you know is, is, that, is more at the upper end of what would be recommended by the government so you they were expending about 700 kilocalories in the exercise sessions and over the three months they lost uh, 7.5 uh, kilograms okay so there was a marked reduction in their weight but and this is why I've got this here that amount of exercise over the five days was about 300 minutes that's greater than the 150 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise suggested by the UK government okay so it's something that's unachievable for most individuals now you think about let's take this gentleman here who's obese He's probably got into that situation from being sedentary, from uh, you know consuming a lot of calories. Um, you're not going to expect somebody in this state to all of a sudden jump to doing 60 minutes a day. Okay, so this is very unrealistic. So therefore, the point of this um, study and the conclusion that you can draw from this is for exercise to have an effect on weight weight loss you've actually got to do so much of it you've got to do much more than what is recommended by by uh, most public health organizations and that's simply unachievable for most of the clients and most individuals that are overweight and obese where you've got to make a gradual change uh, to your physical activity levels and incorporate it with dietary changes as well so I've got it in red here exercise only plays a small role for weight loss now that does not mean that you don't go and exercise you do have to increase your physical activity levels it's extremely important but you cannot exercise only and carry on having a diet which is high in which is calorie dense and it's got high in saturated fat uh, and you know your expenditure is your intake is greater than your expenditure you cannot just exercise and say yep I'm exercising so I am going to carry on eating as normal there's got to be compensation made in various different aspects of, of your of your um, lifestyle so it kind of got me thinking looking at the literature and trying to think about the conclusions why might exercise have such a little effect on weight loss so the moderate exercise recommended by most public health organizations one of the things that we're all we kind of all know is that when we exercise we have what's known as compensatory food intake so I've done it before I've gone for a long 10k run 
uh, and I've come back and all I've been dreaming in that run is that chocolate brownie that I'm going to eat uh, or that pizza that I'm going to have for my evening dinner, you know. So we, we kind of, we do the hard training, but then we don't think about the diet. We start to eat more food, possibly because we're feeling hungry or we think that we've actually got this great calorie deficit. So, you know, we've actually, you know, we've burned 700 kilocalories. Uh, so, we, you know, the pizza is going to contain that or less. But actually, we exercise, you need to do a lot of exercise to burn uh, the calories necessary that you get from most of the calorie dense foods. The other thing that might happen as well is when you've done uh, exercise, quite often you feel tired. So, you know, if you've done a really nice, good, hard session, you'll be quite relaxed for the rest of the day. And most of the other activities that you might do, so it might, it might be vacuuming, doing the housework, um, those kind of non-essential or non-exercise activities, they might be slower. You might do them less vigorously. So therefore, your energy expenditure might be reduced for that reason as well. And also individual variability as well. So, um, you know, we, we all know that it, it, any given person will have, uh, you know, different genetic predisposition uh, among siblings, amongst uh, 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 different individuals. So those factors, you know, your genetic predisposition to for metabolism and how you regulate certain hormones and how energy is actually metabolized within your body, um, your body composition in terms of your lean body mass, your fat mass, all of those things can be out of your control. So you have this individual variability uh, that might be in the terms of your intensity or duration of exercise, the appetite, your food intake. Uh, and then as I talked about, you know, your variation in some uh, physiological measures, fat free mass, fat mass, resting metabolic rate, your hormonal responses, etc. So those things can vary between individuals uh, and they can also possibly contribute to uh, the reason why exercise has a, a lesser effect on weight loss. Now, it's important to say that it's not exercise is not something that you should just discount because when you do lose weight so let's say for example you've you're on a program where you're you're combining exercise and diet exercise can actually help to contribute to that maintenance of the weight loss okay and again i'm going to reference all of the studies where i've got these um, uh, figures and numbers from in the description section of this video so you can look at the data the information in a little bit more detail um, but if you're uh, at 1,500 to 2,000 kilocalories per week energy ex expenditure through exercise associates with maintenance of weight, okay? Um, so the, the, this is actually information from a systematic review that was performed way back in uh, 2000. Uh, the information is still relevant today, of course. Um, so that tells you that if you're actually cons expending this much calories in a given week from physical activity, you are going to uh, reduce um, your weight. And again, a study done more recently, actually in 2014, which was looking at um, physical activity guidelines uh, for weight management, showed that in men who were exercising greater than 150 minutes per week, they only gained 5.6 kilograms compared to individuals who were less active, they gained 9.1. So there was a less, less of a gain in weight in those individuals that were uh, performing greater than 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise. And that was a 33 year follow up study. So that's a long a period of time in which um, to, to look at this type of information. Um, and then um, the other, this is more of a, a, a older study which was published back in 1997. This was looking at descriptive factors for reasons why people you know, were able to maintain their weight. 90% of people that had lost weight were able to kind of explain that the maintenance of their weight uh, um, was due to or maintenance of that weight loss was due to exercise, okay? So it does have a very important role. These are just three uh, studies that I was able to come across. There's going to be many, many more, uh, which you, if you read in depth, you'll get even more information about the role of exercise in um, uh, the maintenance of weight loss as well. So just to finish off this video, I wanted to just mention what are the best strategies. And so based on the scientific evidence, the best strategies to promote weight loss um, are going to be multifaceted. So you're going to be combining um, a number of different things that work for you as an individual. The important part, we know diet, what you're putting into your body is extremely important. 
So what I, my suggestion would be having a well-balanced, nutritious diet, um, which contains you know, a mixture of the, all of the different foods at all costs, I would avoid all fad diets, okay? So, you know, I don't want to name names of certain diets because, you know, that's not what this video is about, but there's lots of diets that are out there that promote fat loss, fat burning, um, but then, but if you look at the scientific evidence for those diets, that's what you need to look at. You need to not forget Instagram influencers or YouTube influencers. You need to, if you want to see whether a new diet that somebody is proclaiming to be brilliant at weight loss is going to be something that maintains that weight reduction over a long period of time and is safe, then you need to look at the scientific research. If that diet is new, it's very unlikely that there's been scientific studies into it. So in that case, exercise caution, because you only get, um, you know, you only need to be on a diet which is harmful for a short amount of time to start getting health consequences from it. This well-balanced and nutritious is something that's been researched very well, okay? So regardless of anybody's beliefs, if you have a diet which is well-balanced, uh, contains all of the nutrition that you need, uh, you're combining it with physical activities, uh, physical activity levels which are, uh, you know, uh, to recommended levels, then you, do, you actually do not need anything more than that. And also do not try and decrease your food intake suddenly, okay? Um, I think if, if you do want to reduce the number of calories, think about things like intermittent fasting, read up about it, uh, and try and see if that's uh, for you. There is some scientific evidence to su suggest that intermittent fasting um, is actually a, a, a good way to gradually lose weight in a safe, safe manner. So physical activity, you've got to increase that. You know, we can't, we have talked about the effect that exercise alone doesn't lead to large weight reductions, but it is part of the jigsaw puzzle, okay? So structured exercise, try to increase that. So, you know, playing in particular sports or walking or being part of groups that encourage physical activity, uh, and also try and incorporate non kind of exercise physical activity into your life. So get off uh, the bus one stop early, try and take stairs instead of the lift. Uh, you know, those small things can all contribute to your calorie expenditure in a given day, okay? Uh, and then of course, it's very important, it's very easy for me to, to kind of in this video say, you know, you've got to lose weight um, and this is what you've got to do, go out there and do it. You, it doesn't work like that. For some people who've had a lifetime of physical inactivity, they've had poor lifestyle choices, uh, they may need some form of behavioral therapy uh, and cognitive behavioral therapy has been shown to be effective, um, you know, but there's other techniques as well, motivational interviewing as well, and you've really got to try and empower uh, a person to change their behavior because just telling about these things and presenting some of the science and all of that isn't isn't always enough. You know, to make a behavior change that's long lasting, you've got to get into here first. So if you're working, if you're a, if you're a practitioner working with clients, I would suggest that the psychological approach is just as important as some of the physiological or laboratory type stuff that you do. Um, talking with the patient, and really trying to, to understand uh, what motivates them to change their behavior and perhaps explore some of the barriers which affect them from either exercising or consuming a, you know, a poor diet and look at some of the, the, the more greater factors, you know, like socioeconomic factors. If somebody's, um, you know, working two jobs because, you know, they, they've got bills to pay, children to feed, they haven't got time to have a well-balanced and nutritious meal, they're just gonna get a ready meal or they're gonna get a takeaway. You've gotta explore those factors and, and, and obviously not judge people uh, because of that. And you've got to look at this thing as a, as a whole integration. So I hope that these series of videos have provided some insight about the, the, the mechanisms of uh, obesity and, and adiposity and also some ways in which we can try and uh, address this great public health concern uh, because if we can make a big difference here with, with obesity then we're going to be protecting ourselves uh, and our, our, our future generations from many of the chronic diseases that come from obesity. Thank you very much for your time and I hope to see you again very soon.